Numerical Computation, Chapter 9, Video 17. Let's try to find a remedy for the stiff system. Let's try our luck with implicit method. Experience told us that this tend to work. So let's see for the systems. Let's imp uh, implement the um, implicit backward Euler step. So it's um, basically the, the same method except um, the derivative here on the right hand side is evaluated at the next time step, that's m plus 1, rendering the method implicit. So let's denote again a to be this coefficient matrix and x the unknown vector collecting x and y and uh, vector xn will be the discrete value for x at time tn. By this notation, now we can rewrite the iteration step using matrix vector notation, so the unknown vector at time step m plus 1, um, which is left-hand side here, equals to the x vector at n, which is this guy here, plus, and h is this h times a times x m plus 1 as a vector. This product will give me these terms. Okay, so solving this um, for x n plus 1, so moving this to the left, I can write this like that, where this is an identity matrix i minus h times a. Then I can multiply both sides by the inverse of this matrix and formally write out x at n plus 1 is the inverse of this matrix times x n. Okay, so let's put this up again. That's what we had on the last page. Now we're going to take some norm, some vector norm on both sides, because this is a vector equals to a vector. So the norm of this vector will equal to the norm of that vector, if they are the same. Then we use this inequality that the matrix times a vector taking vector norm shall be less than the corresponding matrix norm of the matrix times the vector norm of the vector. Okay, so we've used this many times. Now we see if somehow we have that the matrix norm of this matrix is strictly less than 1, then the vector norm of x is decreasing in every time step. And since this is always a non-negative quantity, it will have to approach 0 asymptotically. So let's check this condition, say, use the L2 norm, because that's associated with the eigenvalues. So the L2 norm of this matrix here becomes the maximum value over the eigenvalues of this matrix in absolute value. Okay, so, um, and the eigenvalue of this matrix equals to, because it's inverse and a polynomial expression, so it's exactly the polynomial expression of the eigenvalue of A going in there. So that's um, from your um, course on matrices. And then let's look at the two eigenvalues of A. Um, one is negative 1 and the other is negative 39. That is, both of them are negative. So this quantity here, 1 minus something negative, would be actually 1 plus a positive thing, so it will be strictly bigger than 1 on the denominator, which makes the whole expression strictly less than 1. And you take maximum over two numbers that are strictly less than 1, the max is strictly less than 1, so this implies the L2 norm of this matrix we started here is strictly less than 1. And then we're done. And we see that in the argument we did not need to impose any condition on h, except h is positive, which is always satisfied. So this stability is called unconditional. So the method is unconditionally stable, which is a very undesirable property. Now let's um, look at some critics on the implicit method. So what's good about it? Well, 
one can choose some large values of time step and the method will always be stable no matter if the system is stiff or not. So this is particularly useful if you really have a very stiff system. Of course, advantages come at a price, or some disadvantages. So at every time step, you actually have to solve a system of linear equations because it's implicit. Right? And this could take much longer time for every step. And if you shall be so unlucky, well, which happens, that your system is nonlinear, then implicit method will lead to a system of nonlinear equations to be solved at every time step. And you will have to put in some Newton or Secant method designed for systems of nonlinear equation that can become quickly very expensive to compute. So an easy conclusion to make would be if your system is not stiff, don't get into the trouble of the implicit method. Stick to the explicit. This is something you use, this implicit, is when you're desperate, when it's stiff. Okay, hope that was useful and you enjoyed it. See you next time.